A week or so back, I did a video talking about, I don't know what, it doesn't really matter, but I brought up box office revenue and some of the highest grossing films of all time. I was kind of cycling through them, and I thought to myself, Adam, why don't you just do a video on that? Talk about the top 10 highest grossing films and, you know, see if you agree. See if the audience agrees. So I did. It's right here. You're watching it in real time. Let's begin. Keep in mind, this is not my top 10. It would be wildly different. I'm not sure I would agree with any of them, but we'll find out together as I haven't cheated and looked ahead on the list. Although I know some of them that are on there already because of that aforementioned video. Anyway, at the number 10 spot, we have Frozen 2. This truly took me by surprise. I had no idea Frozen 2 was as popular as the first one. I assumed it did really well, but not near as well as Frozen, which I was wrong about. Frozen, I believe, is on like number 12 or 14 on the list. Well, let me check. I have my, I have my, I have my computer just out of frame here. Okay, it's 16 on the list. 16. So what do I think about Frozen 2? Well, I enjoy it. I like Frozen. I, it doesn't make any sense, but what Disney movies really do at the end of the day, it's magic, it's it's whimsy, it's it's nonsense. I think Frozen 2 is fine. It, it has uh, some lovely music. I don't think the music is as good as the first. It has some good characters who I think are better this time around than they are the first, although I still can't stand stupid Hans and Kristoff. Not Hans. Who's the, who's the idiot guy? Kristoff. Who's the stupid reindeer? Sven. Kristoff and Sven. Not a fan of Kristoff and Sven. I don't like when he does that voice. And it's bothering me that I'm doing it now. Reindeer are better than people. Especially if that person is Kristoff. Not top 10 material. Not even top 100 material for me. But this is the general audience. The general moviegoers eat up Frozen. And I guess they were ready for a sequel. Even if it was far longer than I thought it would take to make one. At the number nine spot, we have Furious 7. That's right, it's a Fast and the Furious movie at the number nine spot of total highest grossing revenue in a film ever. Fast and the Furious 7. Paul Walker died during the making of this movie, so it's understandable people would rush out to see it. So I assume Dark Knight is gonna be on this list at some point because of Heath Ledger and because that movie is far and away better, right? Wrong! No, for whatever inexplicable reason, people absolutely eat up the Fast and the Furious franchise, which is so remarkable to me. I truly don't get it why these movies are so freaking popular. The actors in them are nothing great. I mean, Vin Diesel, come on. What does he do outside of these movies? Pitch Black? The Chronicles of Riddick? That's the same character. Triple X? I don't agree with Fast in the Furious, or I'm sorry, Furious 7 being in the top nine. Disgusting. Number eight is The Avengers. Wow, 2012 seems like a long freaking time ago. It's crazy how, how things have changed in the MCU, hasn't it? But we will always look back on that time capsule of a film and see this is when Iron Man, Hulk, Black Widow, Captain America, Thor, they all got together with Nick Fury's help and Agent Coulson, poor one out. And they, they, they assembled for the first time on the big screen and that truly is something, that's something special for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. And yeah, I think, you know what, fair, fair play. This belongs on the list. It is a, a, a movie event. When I think of highest grossing movies of all time, that's what I think of. I think of events. Things that get people driven out to the theaters. The death of an actor is certainly one of those reasons, but again, there, there's been deaths of other prominent actors that didn't drive out the numbers. Anyway, Avengers, I agree with. It belongs here. There, there's few franchises that are more, I don't, I don't know, is MCU the most successful franchise of all time now, or is it still Star Wars? I don't know, it's, it's, it's anybody's guess, but not really, I could look it up and tell you, but I won't, let's move on. The Lion King. So this is what it feels like to be in hell. The live action Lion King is the number seven highest grossing film of all time. Un-freaking real. Not only is it a disgusting, commercially viable, shot for shot at times, hack job of a remake, but it is a soulless, 
bland, emotionless film featuring terrible voice acting, miserable music, and just a awful treatment of what came before it. A disrespect, a disservice of the animated classic. Why does this exist? To make money. Why did people go out and see it in droves? Nostalgia, timing, marketing. This is a very ugly practice by Disney in my opinion. I do not like these live action remakes. I can't stand them for the most part. And if there's nothing to them, then why are we doing it outside of money? There was nothing unique about this film. Jungle Book, I thought was great because it didn't do the same goddamn movie with real people and CG animals instead of animated ones. It told a different version of the story. But no, sir, no, ma'am. I do not accept this premise that that shitty Lion King movie is sitting at number seven of all time. It's awful. Let's move on. <laughs> I'm looking down right now. I'm seeing Jurassic World at number six. Not Jurassic Park, Jurassic World. Holy shit. We are in some sort of an upside down, aren't we friends? When Jurassic World makes more money than the original timeless classic Jurassic Park. Oh my God. Jurassic Park is legit one of my favorite movies of all time. It's easily in my top 10. It is why I go to the movies. The cinematic magic that's on display. The great characters, the vibrant setting, the, the unique chemistry between the characters, the wonderful visuals, and Jurassic World is a soft reboot carbon copy of what worked before. It's just rehashing the same story elements, repackaged for a new generation. And don't get me wrong, I'm a big fan of dinosaurs. I like dino destruction. I like people running and getting eaten by them. So I like Jurassic World. But to say that it's even close, to say that it's even thorns and tails above Jurassic Park is, is just, just bonkers to me. And I know, I know box office revenue doesn't equal quality of the film, but many people will. And they will argue that's what makes the film good. And that's what I talked about in that previous video. But here I just wanted to really dive in, really, really focus on the box office revenue and see where things stack up. So Jurassic World to me, it's a fine movie after a string of pretty awful sequels. It brought things back, kind of course corrected for a new generation. But then of course it's ruined again with the next film. Um, whatever that, the, the king, the, the whatever, Fallen Kingdom, Fallen Franchise. Fallen franchise. At number five, we're at Avengers Infinity War. I will always and forever have a chip on my shoulder that they took out that awesome line by Thanos in that film where, where he says something like, one does not consider fun when balancing the universe or something like that. I don't know. He says it awesome. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but I love that line so much, so much that I can't even truly remember it. Avengers Infinity War is my favorite MCU film to date. It's gonna be hard to ever pass it. I don't know if they ever will in my eyes. I thought just everything came together so perfectly in this thing. I think it's easily better than Endgame. I think it's right up there with Empire, in my opinion. It's right up there with some of the later Harry Potter films. I'm a big Harry Potter fan, so that's not disservice. That's not disrespect to the MCU film. Not quite up there with any of the Lord of the Rings movies though. And as I do a cursory glance down at my list again. Yeah, okay, good, cool. Zero Lord of the Rings movies in the top 10. Zero. <laughs> oh, fuck. Again, this was an event film. It was a big moment in cinema. I can see why it's this high up on the list. I agree. Let's move on. At number four on the list, we have Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens, or as I like to call it now, The Force Fails. I was very high on this movie after seeing it, as I think a lot of general audience was, and even fans of Star Wars. Today, looking back at it, I still think the movie's good, but man, everything that follows isn't, so thereby it does a disservice to episode seven. It really hurts any momentum episode seven had. And much like Jurassic World, this is very much a New Hope 2.0. It's a soft reboot. 
fans were very split on this idea. A lot of people wanted him to go an entirely different route, a new direction, tell a new story. And then others were, were thinking, you know what? I don't like the prequels. In fact, I fucking hate the prequels. I need to get some sort of a semblance of Star Wars back. The way it looked, the way it felt, the characters, the settings. And that's what episode seven did for me. It brought it back. And then we had, of course, all the controversy and the different wings of people getting upset because Ray was a fun word, Mary Sue, or everything's just conveniently happening and nothing's new or fresh. And these are all fair criticisms to a degree. I was willing to give the story the benefit of the doubt. I would have imagined there was some sort of a plan in place for this trilogy, you know, the, one of the biggest franchises of all time, you would assume they had a beginning, middle, and end, you know, picked out. I understand the original didn't. I understand that episode uh, four, or, you know, one back in the day, was uh, A New Hope. Um, they didn't really have anything planned out past the first, at least not nothing too concrete, uh, because they didn't have the budget, and they didn't know it was going to be successful. Disney bought this goddamn property for a ridiculous amount of money, knowing it was their cash cow. They could have had the next seven movies built out if they would have had a decent playbook in mind. But no, instead, they put different cooks in the kitchen for different episodes, and what you're left with is a huge mess. Where our hero, Luke Skywalker, dies alone on a goddamn rock, telephoning in the final battle. Just beep, 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 beep. Hi, I can't be there in person, but uh, I can trick uh, Kylo Ren for a few minutes if you guys want to just get further into the cave. I'm not actually going to do anything of real substance here. Okay, bye. Click. Not getting Luke, Leia, and Han in a scene together is maybe the biggest disservice in all of cinema. How do you fuck this up so badly? Again, Force Awakens set a nice table. We, we knew where people were at. We knew where Han was, Leia, Luke's out on a rock, pissed off, but he's waiting there at the time. We don't know what's gonna happen. Ray's there, she's perfect, she knows how to do everything already, but maybe she's unlocking abilities that were lying dormant because Luke had implanted them there or she, she learned them and then there were Jedi wiped away until the moment she was ready to fully understand or they were gonna slowly build up to something, but no, it's just hack, shit, writing and then you bring in another guy for the sequel that doesn't give a fuck about the series that wanted to do his own star wars trilogy so instead of taking what the previous dude had set up he's like i think i'm gonna start over right now and he gives us a slow moving space chase that's all it is it's a slow moving space chase nothing of substance happens in this middle section of the trilogy what a disaster. So now, when I look back at A Force Awakens, which was a monumental experience in theaters, people were in line for hours. It was like the good old days when you couldn't pre-pick your seats or pre-buy your tickets. You had to fucking show up and stand in line for hours upon hours. You had to do that here even when you pre-bought your tickets. It was epic. It was awesome. People were dressed up. They're talking. We saw the movie. We freaking loved the movie. And then we sat on the movie. It percolated. We came up with ideas for the sequel. Because this first one wasn't very original. But we gave them the benefit, didn't we? Some of us. Some of us, I guess, were smarter, right? They, they were more cynical. They were more jaded. And fair enough. Fair enough. You, you did it. You won. But what did you really win at the end of the day? And I told you so. I don't want an I told you so. I wanted a good goddamn movie. I was hopeful. I had a new hope for a better franchise than the prequel shit. I had a new hope that Disney could take what Lucas had envisioned and bring it to life. But no, they dismissed him. They dismissed the ideas and they just ran in different directions completely. So you get a V and then they tried to bring it back and it's uneven, and it's ugly, and it's a mess. And that's where The Force Awakens is left. Just this, this wonderful reliving, this wonderful nostalgic trip back to a world that we once loved and respected, and it's all for nothing. And it's at number four on this list, 
and that's fair, but it's also super depressing. Let's move on. Number three on this list is the Titanic. If you weren't born in 1997 or you were just a tiny little toddler, you truly don't know why Titanic is this high up, but I do. I was old enough. I would have been, I would have been like 11 or 12. I remember the moms. If you can get a mom to go to the theater, not just once, but multiple times, you have done a good job on your movie. You have done a great job on your marketing. And man, did they do a great job. You have Queen Celine Dion with My Heart Will Go On on the soundtrack. Holy shit, that's a banger. If you appreciate Celine Dion, you're in the same boat as me, buddy. It's not the Titanic either. This is a ship that's strong. She puts a sound in my ears like no other. And you should absolutely respect a queen when she comes by. You should bow to her. And her king? James Cameron. I don't personally give a shit about Titanic. It's a good movie. You know, it's long as hell. I don't have time to sit there and watch a ship sink for just a few hours. But it, th there's no denying the, the craft that's on display. And James Cameron, again, if he's not gonna get on there for Aliens and he's not gonna get on there for Terminator 1 or 2, I'm just glad he's on here because he deserves it. And since doing a 20 minute docu-series on him for Screen Rant, I truly got an appreciation for this guy. I mean, I already appreciated him going in, but damn, the dude is talented. Coming up with new technologies to film things, building out models that are massive in scale, just having such an eye for everything and knowing exactly where such a massive scale, such a huge budget is gonna go. I mean, I couldn't even imagine directing something at that level and, and he does it so effortlessly time and time again. People could not see this movie day one, people could not see this movie day 12. It was packed full constantly and of course we didn't have the amount of theaters there are today and the amount of screens so seating was limited there was such a hype for this lines were around the building you thought 50 shades of gray got women in heat moms have never simped so hard for someone than they did for leo in that film so while my heart doesn't go on for titanic it does for james cameron and then that reason i agree We're getting real close to the three billion mark. No film has hit it yet, but Avengers Endgame is close at two billion, seven hundred and some million. I don't know, it's, it's, it's way up there. It's a lot of money. Disney owns all this shit anyways, so. Good job, gang. Good job, Mickey. If you've been on my channel over the years, you already know I like Avengers Endgame. I'm not huge on it, but it's good. It's a fine film. I mean, it, it closes out everything very well. There's some story arcs I don't agree with or like, I think it's a bit longer than it needs to be, and there's some stuff I definitely would cut or fix. But at the end of the day, we get an amazing tribute to Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr.'s character. We have one of the most massive scope battles in cinema history with that final battle. Uh, DCEU looks at this shit and they're just crying because they did such a horrible job building their universe. And I'm not knocking DCEU, I, I really don't care if it's MC or DC, whatever. It's at the same, it's just comics. I like all of it. But there is no denying, there's no argument that Marvel just did it so much better. They had it planned out really well. So I don't argue with the number two spot for this thing. It was an event like not many other before. I think it's a little high, personally, I'd put Infinity War above it, but again, this top 10 list, I don't know if I'd put any of these movies on here for my own personal, and maybe someday I'll do my own top 10 list, it's a very dangerous game though. I know I'd leave something off because I like a ton of films, and as I get older and change and you know, whatever, over time, some of my opinions on movies change or I watch them again and dislike them more or love something more. So it uh, ranking things, not really my favorite to do. People love them though, so I try to do them. I already looked back on my MCU list recently and I think, yeah, okay, I did put, Bla I did put Black Widow too high. <laughs> It was fresh in my mind, okay? I don't claim to be an expert at ranking things. Number one on the list is gonna be very overrated for a ton of people, and it's Avatar, but how can it not? 
there's never going to be a number one box office grossing movie that everybody thinks is like, oh yeah, that should definitely be there. I can't imagine there's a single movie that would come to mind where people would be like, yep. I mean, even if you said like Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, which isn't on the top 10, there would be a huge swath of people that don't even like Star Wars. You're like, what? That's the, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Avatar, I think it's pretty split with people though. There definitely is a lot of people that don't like this movie at all. They say it's unoriginal, it's dances with Smurfs. You know, all the stuff you've heard a million times over the last, what, decade? It's, it's, it's an older movie now. Avatar came out in 2009. It has, I believe, three sequels set up so far by the master himself, James Cameron. I already said my piece on Cameron, so I'm perfectly fine having Avatar up here. Again, wouldn't be in my top 10. I respect game though. If you want to hear my in-depth thoughts on this, you could check out that Screen Rant video. I can't remember what bullshit title they gave it. It was like, how Avatar changed the world. I don't come up with the titles that Screen Rant does. They, they get the algorithm though, so I'm not I'm really knocking them. They're just playing the game like everyone else. The coupling of the cool cameras, the state-of-the-art digital capture, everything that Cameron did though to make that movie a reality, and the fact that he had in his mind for decades and decades before he could really do what he wanted just shows how this guy is not only the most patient man in the world, but a true visionary behind the lens of a camera. The movie itself, yes, it's been told a lot. You know, Fern Gully, things of that nature. Man comes in, destroys the, you know, the earthy elements, takes whatever he wants, doesn't think about the nature, doesn't think about the inhabitants there. But then they fight back, you know? It's very much cowboys and Indians, things of that nature. And you know what? I don't have a freaking problem with that. Taking inspiration from real world events and putting them on the screen is fine. So many movies do that. And stories do get retold over and over. So the fact that it's not the most unique story, again, doesn't bother me. It was all about the visuals. It was all about the, the environments. And Pandora really is an awe-inspiring thing. You have floating mountains with waterfalls. You have lush rainforests. Really cool creatures. The Navi are interesting. I like the idea, I like everything it presents. Is it too long? Absolutely for me. But man, is it epic, and it's led to other films and other properties using that technology that he honed and crafted, and we've had some great things because of it. So Avatar at number one, not my pick, but I get it. I get it. So those are the top 10 highest grossing movies of all time. Clearly, we didn't see eye to eye on them but I appreciate and understand why a lot of them are there. Maybe not so much Lion King or Fast 7 or Furious 7, I'm sorry. The naming conventions on those are just atrocious. Let me know what you thought though in the comments. Where are you at with things? Maybe even throw out your top 10. Although down the road, I promise I will try to get one put together myself. I might even break it into top 10 action movies, top 10 comedies, top 10 horror movies or whatever if you if you want to see that let me know in the comments as well please like the video if you had a good time subscribe if you haven't and there's also a notification bell i'm told that people should absolutely turn on so do that if you haven't already wow truly an amazing video wasn't it if you're a subscriber here and you think i'm doing a great job which i mean i let's not let's not beat around the bush i am at this point please think about maybe supporting me here with the join button where you can become a member of adam does movies get access to a show i do called the cringe which is only available to join members and also for patreons at patreon.com adam does movies both places give you the opportunity to see further videos and to feel like you're, you're part of something special because you are you're helping one guy entertain you and for that, I thank you.